As visible LEDs begin to replace incandescent and fluorescent lighting in more and more applications, thermal management of the LED junction temperature has become the major issue. The maximum light output demanded by most applications results in extraordinary heat generation within the LED, and this must be mitigated to optimize light output, which is called efficacy, and to ensure longevity. Optech Technology is a world leader in visible LED thermal management and can provide solutions to our customers' most demanding heat challenges. This video reveals that heat generation is an extraordinarily complex issue and must be left to the experts. An LED consists of a semiconductor chip that is packaged to maximize light output, facilitate circuit connections, and provide basic thermal management of the semiconductor. An LED chip consists of various semiconducting materials that are grown in layers. A typical Optech high brightness LED consists of as many as eight layers, all aimed at maximizing performance. Chip layers are typically a sapphire substrate, a metal reflecting layer, a thin proprietary gallium nitride buffer, gallium nitride epitaxy, and indium gallium nitride active junction surrounded by layers of aluminum gallium nitride cladding. Lastly, the chip semiconductor is capped with another gallium nitride layer that has a specialized surface treatment. As the crystal structure in the indium gallium nitride active layer is grown, magnesium atoms are doped into the mix as one part in 10,000 parts. This will later aid the generation of light. As current flows through the chip layers, heat is generated and concentrated within the junction. This heat can increase in an uncontrolled fashion and dramatically hinder the performance of the LED and its light output. In fact, this phenomena is so destructive that specifications for LED light performance list light characteristics measured when a millisecond pulse is applied to the chip. Seconds later, due to heat buildup, those specs are no longer valid and are seriously degraded. This heat generation will run out of control with dire consequences without appropriate thermal management. In a short time, the chip can approach the classic thermal runaway situation. Optech manages its complex LED assemblies at a junction temperature of 85 degrees centigrade, which is indicative of well-controlled thermal dissipation. Optech has successfully helped innumerable companies on these thermal management challenges. This heat management includes proprietary substrates, sophisticated heat sinking, and highly technical management of the chip manufacturing process. A major advantage that Optech offers in heat management is its Optotherm substrate. Optotherm is a proprietary substrate that utilizes a copper-clad circuit that is bonded to a thermally conductive dielectric material. This is then bonded to an aluminum substructure. This combination exhibits very good thermal characteristics and serves as the initial step in getting heat out of and away from the packaged chip. Optotherm reduces thermal resistance to an extraordinary 1.8 degrees centigrade per watt, well beyond competitive products. Breakdown dielectric is an impressive 4,000 volts. When heat is a major issue, the combination of Optex Optotherm and a heat sink is required. The heat sink can be substantial and is often finned for added heat dissipation. This combination will conduct the heat away from the semiconductor junction through the LED packaging, through the layers of the optotherm substrate, and into the heat sink. The heat sink facilitates further conduction of the heat away from the LED and then radiates the heat away by way of the large surface area represented by the fins. Optech utilizes chip packaging that facilitates heat being conducted away from the LED junction. The underside of the chip package is soldered to Optech's Optotherm substrate, wherein Optotherm's various layers are optimized to conduct heat away from the junction. Each layer performs a somewhat different proprietary task in conducting the heat away from the junction. The heat conduction through the optotherm and heat sink is proportional to the area of the heat sink times the temperature differential between the chip junction divided by the length of the conducting path. The copper, the dielectric layer, and aluminum layers of optotherm all work together wherein the summation of the thermal coefficients and thicknesses of those layers ensure that heat is efficiently transferred to the heat sink. Heat transfer through the heat sink involves similar complex thermal management. 
up until this stage, dissipation of heat has all been through conduction. The fins on the heat sink must now exhaust heat through radiation. Heat sink fins must be designed with maximum radiating efficiency. Fin radiating efficiency is the ratio of the fin heat rate and the maximum rate a fin could dissipate. Since the maximum fin efficiency is a function of the fin shape, area, and its base environmental temperature, radiation efficiency can be thought of as an equation recognizing the fin area and its temperature differential. Typically, three fin shapes are used, rectangular, triangular, and cylindrical. Under most circumstances, the rectangular fin will prove to be more efficient by several percent. Extending the length of the fin is not always useful since the temperature gradient limits the useful length. Clearly, the thermal management of the semiconductor junction is a complex issue. Optech's proprietary optotherm substrate is a key ingredient for getting the heat out of the LED junction as quickly and effectively as possible. Thermal coefficients and layer thicknesses are progressively matched for maximum thermal conduction. Heat sink design and management is also complex and many thermal characteristics must be taken into account. Optimization of thickness, material, area, and fin configuration makes the difference between simply conducting heat away from the LED versus managing the junction temperature of the LED. Most of the time, the pursuit of thermal management ends at this stage. The chip package, optotherm substrate, and heat sink have been optimized to conduct as much heat out of the junction as possible. Often, for a high brightness LED, the junction will stabilize at a relatively high temperature in deference to all this heat management. This will limit light output, cause wavelength shifts, limit the chip's longevity, and compromise its reliability. Optech's success in solving numerous thermal management challenges is further attributed to Optech pushing the science of thermal management to new limits. The real issue of successful thermal management starts deep inside the LED chip at the quantum physics level. The key issue driving the adoption of LED lighting is its efficiency, multiples better than incandescent or fluorescent lighting. However, it is a little known fact that an LED is actually a very inefficient device. Typically, only 18% of the energy put into an LED is available as light output. The remaining 82% of the energy is wasted, and this wasted energy is heat. This wasted energy occurs as electrical losses, quantum losses, extraction losses, and as a result of the white light conversion process. The real first step in thermal management is that of reducing this wasted energy. Since this wasted energy manifests itself as heat, doubling the efficiency of the LED is the equivalent of reducing the thermal management challenge by half. World-class thermal performance starts with the engineering in the chip and its packaging. Here, Optech's chip engineering excels. Maximizing the efficiency of the LED begins with an analysis how the LED chip generates light. The generation of light is a complex quantum physics process dependent upon the various layers within the atomic makeup of the chip. As current flows through the layers of the chip, the free electrons that constitute that current ultimately combine with atoms in the active junction layer and emit light. To fully understand the process, it is necessary to examine this activity at the quantum physics level. The various layers of the chip are grown of atoms of gallium, aluminum, nitrogen, and other compounds. Relative to the generation of light, the most important layer is the active junction that consists of indium-gallium nitride. This layer is doped with the fourth compound of magnesium to facilitate the photon generation that is light. Complex particle physics, which is beyond the scope of this story, determine the energy levels of the electrons in an atom. If we could examine an atom isolated by itself, we would find that there are multiple orbitals of electrons around the nucleus. We find an orbital of two electrons, then a second orbital of six electrons, and a third orbital of 10 electrons, depending upon the type of atom. When each of these orbitals are full, the electrons within the atom carry the maximum energy that can be associated with each orbital. 
As our isolated atom is brought closer to other atoms, as in the case of the lattice network of the chip, quantum physics interactions cause the electrons to bind into two distinct energy levels, the conduction band and the valence band. A band gap separates these two energy states. If we now apply an external source of voltage, some of the electrons in the valence band will gain enough energy to jump across the band gap and combine with an atom in the lower energy conduction band. We use the terms electron and hole to describe these events. In so doing this, the electron comes to rest in an orbital of lesser energy and must therefore give up some of its higher energy from the valence band. This event causes a photon to be emitted and therefore balances the energy equation. Energy is neither lost or gained. This emitted photon is light. This activity duplicates itself innumerable times, thus emitting a substantial amount of photons. This process is called radiative recombination and is the phenomena that generates light. This process of radiative recombination continues on a large scale, creating large numbers of photons that are emitted in random directions. However, this process also introduces the first of the wasted energy in the LED, the I squared R losses. As the electrons move throughout the semiconductor material, they encounter ohmic resistance that produces heat. This heat manifests itself at the LED junction. A second phenomena is that of non-radiative recombination that occurs when the exchange of an electron fails due to imperfections in the material. As a result, a photon is not emitted. When this exchange fails, a phonon is emitted instead of a photon, and this phonon emission causes structure vibration that is completely wasted energy. We find further LED inefficiency due to electron leakage in the P layer of the chip. The chip construction includes an aluminum gallium nitride barrier that the electron must overcome in order to participate in the radiative recombination. This barrier also serves the dual purpose of preventing wandering electrons to backtrack away from the active junction of the chip and therefore waste its energy without creating a photon. When this backtracking occurs, we have electron leakage that accounts for a further portion of the chip's inefficiencies. Auger dissipation is a three-particle process whereby an electron and hole recombine but transfer the energy to a third carrier. The third particle relaxes, emitting the energy as waste heat. Auger recombination is a three-particle process, so it increases with the cube of the carrier concentration. Polarization is another detrimental effect limiting LED efficiency. The polar nature of nitride semiconductors can give rise to internal electric fields that separate electrons from holes in the light-emitting indium-gallium nitride region, reducing the radiative efficiency. Imperfections in the crystal create pathways for electrons and holes to release their energy as heat rather than light. Threading dislocations are particularly problematic in the nitride-based LEDs because of the difficult interface between the aluminum oxide crystalline structure and its adjoining gallium nitride surface. Contact resistance is yet another generator of heat. The resistance of metal semiconductor interface adds further heating through added ohmic heating. Nitride LEDs are particularly susceptible to this issue because of the large band gap and difficulties with P-type doping. Again, substantial energy can be wasted as a result. Output coupling efficiency will also rob the LED of some of its efficiency. Light extraction is difficult because of the higher refractive index of semiconductors than the surrounding air. Light incident beyond the critical angle suffers total internal reflection and is trapped in the chip. These photons will be reabsorbed and lost as waste heat. Phosphoring has become the industry standard method for white light conversion of blue LEDs. The efficiency of phosphors is limited by many issues and parameters, especially thickness of the coating, and must be optimized for excellent color temperature and efficiency. In particular, the efficiency is fundamentally limited by what is called the manley row condition, because each high-energy photon is converted to a lower-energy photon. We have now learned that as many as nine distinct issues are responsible for the inefficiency of our LED. The better we control these phenomena, the more efficient our LED is and lesser thermal management is required. 
Optech maximizes thermal management by attacking each of the many losses in the LED chip during the manufacturing process. Let's take a look at process control in the manufacturing of the LED. We first encountered I-squared R losses as a major contributor to our LED's inefficiency. Optech's chip engineering organization has been designing analog and digital chips for more than 34 years and has developed an expertise not matched in the industry. We utilize the world's most sophisticated wafer fabs and control the process with the wisdom of those years. Chip substrate imperfections are minimized and process control identifies imperfections in time for correction. Thinner chip designs and larger surface areas further contribute to minimizing these losses. We also encountered substantial losses associated with non-radiative recombination. Imperfections in the crystal growth create non-radiative current paths that generate waste heat. Optech mitigates non-radiative recombination through advanced proprietary metal-organic chemical vapor deposition system design and crystal growth sequence. Perhaps most important, Optech uses what is called the six nines in specifying its chip chemistry. Optech will typically use compounds at 99.9999% purity, an expensive proposition. Rigorous control over the wafer fab in terms of gases, piping, reactor, and maintenance all further contribute to attaining the highest purity levels. Optech minimizes electron leakage in the P layer. Many of Optech's LEDs use a proprietary barrier that ensures that the electron cannot leak back into the lattice of the substrate. This is particularly important for high brightness white LEDs. This ensures that the majority of electrons reaching the junction gap successfully create a photon as opposed to falling back into the inactive portions of the chip. In order to minimize Auger dissipation, Optech typically increases the active region volume of the chip by proprietary metal organic vapor deposition techniques. This reduces the carrier density, thereby dramatically reducing loss due to Auger. Optech will minimize polarization fields by growing gallium nitride devices on semipolar planes and by growing a heterostructure that has thin layers of tertiary compounds that serve to create layers of compressive strain and tensile strain that serve to counteract one another and reduce the stresses that cause the electromagnetic fields in the first place. Optic attacks the losses due to threading dislocations by many of the techniques already discussed. Purity levels and state-of-the-art wafer fabs contribute to the growth of very pure epitaxial substrates. Proprietary buffer layers further play an important role in minimizing these losses. Again, Optech uses advanced growth techniques and device structures that significantly improve contact and spreading resistance losses, in turn reducing the I-squared R ohmic heating at the interface of the contact. Optech's many years of experience in wire bonding further ensures minimum contact resistance. These improvements also ensure a more uniform light output from the LED. Another contributor is that of maximizing the area of the contact without disrupting maximum photon emission. Output coupling efficiency deteriorates as a result of the dramatically different refraction characteristics of the chip surface to air. Optech includes a textured surface that increases light extraction by reducing the amount of light that experiences total internal reflection. Optech can often improve output coupling efficiency by a significant percentage compared to a chip without this proprietary treatment. Phosphoring of gallium nitride LEDs enables solid state lighting, but the phosphoring process must be tightly controlled in terms of phosphor quality thickness uniformity, placement, mixture, and homogeneity. All play into color temperature and achieving the desired color rendering index. Optics Optical Measurement Lab is a major contributor to Optics LED and thermal management success by providing radiometric and photometric measurements from the spectroradiometer and its associated attachments. Each piece of equipment in the lab is designed to provide a collection of light data which are quantifiable and repeatable test results that are useful for long-term stable reference points. 
The spectroradiometer system is comprised of integrating spheres for total collection of all light, condition A and B tubes for intensity measurements, a goniometer for angular characterizations, and a thermoelectric Peltier cooler for establishing a thermal environment for data collection. Infrared thermal imaging camera is used for optimizing thermal management designs by monitoring in real time the outflow of generated heat from dye through heat sink to ambient environment. Scanning electron microscopy and X-ray analysis are available tools in the product analysis lab for benchmarking changes in product and processes over time and for determining root cause of any anomalies generated by evaluations, life testing, design of experiments or non-conforming components. Heat generated within an LED package or assembly by input power requires precise understanding of parameter effects such as light output, wavelength, VF, and output degradation. The power input to the VLED generates the heat, the device's thermal resistance indicates how well the package can dissipate the heat, and heat sinking removes this heat to the surrounding environment. Monitoring the junction temperature during operation generates important analytical graphs for use in the design of an application's thermal and mechanical needs. The optical measurement equipment measures critical parameters over time with generated junction temperatures to indicate parametric values useful in the final application design. Graphs can then be produced for forward voltage, total luminous flux, or intensity and dominant wavelength versus forward current or junction temperature. Clearly, Optech is the best choice for your LED lighting application. Optech provides LEDs that are designed with proprietary features to minimize the quantum physics phenomena that generates heat and hinders light output. Optech's thermal management expertise is world class, and Optech's award winning LED laboratory ensures continued state of the art LED development and ever improving thermal management techniques. Optech has been in the LED business for 34 years and continues to set the standard in lighting applications. Turn to Optech to ensure your success in the most difficult of applications. Optech, the leader in LED lighting.